Hola, we are back. Welcome back to the Casual Convo Show. I'm your host, Coco. And of course, is my amazing co-host, DJ Extraordinaire, Big Bosco from the Bronx. We are, <laughs> we are discussing verbal, nonverbal communication and everything in between. We had a great person on the first day we talked about um the use of your hands, the tone of um, how you talk to people, how you stare at people. Um, should it be offensive? Um, the tone of our voice, like how things could be mistaken for the wrong thing. On social media, why does everyone come for Bosco? And now comments have also said, you know, it's all about the people. Some people don't like to be talked to. Matrix said people are Consensitive, all right? So it's kind of like, you know, get it together. So there's so many different things of nonverbal and verbal communication. So, of course, as we always do, the second half is always a little bit juicier because now we're going to get into nonverbal and verbal communication within business, friendships, and relations, personal relationships. Um, did I skip something? Oh, which one do you prefer? That's going to be first before we get into that. So I think I said for me, I prefer verbal communication as opposed to uh, nonverbal or, you know, texting. Um, I think what I didn't mention when it comes to nonverbal is it's important when you talking to people to also be mindful of their body language. Um, and I guess you can see if a person is engaged or if what you're saying is really getting through. And I think it's okay to stop and say, you know, you got any questions, like, you good? You know what I mean? Like, so that you know that the conversation is going in the right way, where it's going to be effective, especially depending on what you're talking about. A little bit. It's low. Okay. So, um... One, two, one, two. How about now? Okay. Um... I guess it's half and half with me, depending on the situation. You were so loud. Oh, am I? <laughs> oh, second. How about now? How sound? One, two, one, two. Still loud? A little bit. A little bit more though. It's so loud. Up a little bit. Mic check, mic check. There we go, right there. There you go. All right, here we go. My I bad. told you it's to the left all the time. Yeah, I know for real. <laughs> um, I, I guess it depends on the situation with the, the communication. Um, like with me, my family say I have a hard time saying I love them, but I'll show them. I'll give them hugs. I'll give them all. I do all that physical stuff. Even if I'm with a, with someone, I got a hard time saying it, but I'll show them. I give him the hug. I do all that stuff. He's bad. What's up, Richie? Rich. What's up, bro? All that stuff. Now, if it's business, um, or if it's if an issue, anything type of things crazy, yeah, we need it. We need it. We need to talk out face to face because I need to see what you look like so I can see you legit. I need to hear your voice. I need to see. I need all that stuff so I can see if you're legit or you're trying to game. You know, because anyone can text you, be like, "Yo, man, I'm sorry," but in the meantime. He tells us, hope, you know, but he just texted the old man, my bad, but he don't give, you know, <laughs> Matrix is crazy. <laughs> that's that's DJ Vlad's cousin. <laughs> but, um, I never yeah. heard that I sounded like him. That's funny, bro. You know what? When I think about it now, the only thing different, you got the, you got the New York accent, but y'all do got the same type of octave. <laughs> You know, it's it's funny too because sometimes, like especially with the Gene Deal interviews, oh yeah, he's had him on multiple times. Yeah, even Keefe D, but Keefe D trolled him bad, man. Yeah, Keefe D don't care. Oh, he was like, "Oh, you a Pac fan, are you?" Yeah, Keefe D don't care. With that little sinister look, I was like, "Damn, that's cold." Keefe D don't care. And Pac was my favorite too. Yeah, Keefe D don't care. But um, yeah, it depends on the situation with the um, with the uh, communication. But yeah, if it's business, we need to. You know, we need to be right there, you know. Matrix. Okay, so I think for me, when it comes to um, business, it's a little iffy for me. Um, I probably, depending on, so I guess we can talk about personal businesses and like uh, 
corporation business. Yeah. I think yeah. in some forms I do prefer like emails or written or like informal when it comes to certain things because I need a paper trail or I need to be go back to something to say, hey, this is what what is especially when it comes to changes. Mm -hmm. protocols, expression of issues, correction, something happened, this needs to be done, updates, things mm -hmm. like that. I think I choose, I would prefer the nonverbal route, but also be mindful of how you send me that nonverbal. We talked about that too. <laughs> about that too. Um, also, uh, but then when it comes to um, certain meetings, I think the verbal piece is really, really important to make sure everyone is engaged because sometimes everybody can see an email, but everybody don't reply or everybody doesn't receive or just like receive, got it. And then all of a sudden everybody forgot or don't know what's going on. So that way to make sure that everybody's on the same page and then you can send a follow-up update after that. But then I think um, the one thing I definitely um, learned over the years, and it really didn't set out to me until like I went back to school and then I started uh, getting different type of positions that I realized how important how you communicate verbally and non-verbally within your business or within your role or position, whether it's your own business or within a company is very much important. So like how today I told you how something had had me tight at work, right? Mm -hmm. I would never send an email like that if I'm feeling some type of way. Because I know that you'll do a lot of backspacing or purr like the fuck I said, or you had me fucked up. Instead, I take a minute, I might vent to you, or I might vent to a, a friend of mine, like, this motherfucker, da -da 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 -da. so now I got all of that out. I can take yeah. a breather. Then when I do send my email of whatever it is that I need to know or whatever, it's going to come off a little bit better. I think even um, we have a habit of typing when we're in the emotion because we want somebody to understand how we feel that's not always appropriate and it's not always needed but at the same time it's very much off-putting for somebody to not even read because if you send me this and you start enough with first of all i'm not even going to pass first of all because you already had me up and i'm not yeah. reading the rest of that yeah first mm -hmm. of all it's, that's like the, that's like the yeah that's like the the, the yeah yeah that's that's it, like when someone says to you like I don't mean to sound racist or I don't mean to that's already let you know, okay, prepare yourself. Some shit about to go down. <laughs> I don't mean to offend nobody. Yeah, well, I don't mean no harm, but I don't mean no harm. <laughs> yes, you do mean all of the harm, but continue. <laughs> Idris, I see you, bro. I see you because that came up recently too. I know that. That was so comical, bro. <laughs> Well, see, listen, you got a whole audience of, of people that's trying to what happened. Tell us. Oh, Lord. It's a lot of we joke. were having a, uh, I guess you could say, a football conversation about Mr. Kaepernick. <laughs> and uh, he was called a D bag and a couple other. Yeah. Not just, just Idris challenged. Okay. Uh, why is he a D bag? That's number one. And number two, uh, you know, and, and Idris alluded to, is it because he, of what he stood for? And the, the <laughs> matter of the subject basically kind of danced around it. And then it hits me on the side and it's like, yo, man, he's being emotional. And, and he, he, I feel like he's inferring that I'm a racist. And I'm like, well, dog, if you say it's about football and we all know the Billionaire Boys Club got this man um, blackballed. And if you're not coming up with a with a real football reason, then you know what, pal? It could be uh, construed as that. But don't worry, my guy Idris ain't no snowflake, and he ain't even tripping. But the point is, is that you know, similar to uh, an apology, like I alluded to on the first half of this show, it, you know, just explain, explaining, apologizing, the e word, the a word, don't, don't really seem like it's a it's a thing. Yeah, and the thing about it, Coco, um, I didn't think it was racist. No, he did not. And I, and, and I more political than anything. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not and I don't have an issue with, with somebody being on one side of the fence or the yeah. other. But yeah. my thing is like this. When you're talking about a situation where the billionaire boys club, which yes, is all not predominantly, is all white males. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kaepernick is mulatto, you know, he's half black. And and the point the point to be made is that he stood for something that he genuinely believed in, whether um, we agree or not, that's not the subject at hand. It's that this man got blackballed 
This man literally got blackballed. And see, the only question I asked was, other than that, what in sports did make him a dirt? That's all I wanted to know. Like the other guy, the, the third wheel I was in the conversation, he hit me up on the low and I said, dude, don't even worry about it. The only thing that I could track to his character that could be in question, and and once again, it's a he said, he said, or he said maybe the other guy didn't say nothing, is that uh, he may have been involved with uh, his current lady, I believe was with Alden Smith, still a former teammate of his. From a character-based standpoint, maybe. But then again, I don't know that for fact. Right. And I made it clear. I'm basically talking about on hearsay. So I'm not, I I don't like to jump to to conclusions if I don't have all the facts. I'll put it to you like this, guys. My father was uh, a, a first responder on 9-11. He was a cop. Mm, right. He was a good dude. He mm-hmm. was a good dude. Point to be made is when Kaepernick first started and I saw piggies on the socks, yeah, I, wasn't, I, I, wasn't I wasn't overly was, endeared. I wasn't cool but, but over time, you know, and, and he's he's human and he's going to make a mistake, whatever. But over time, my thing is this. He got with a military leader. Military leader suggested, if you want to protest, kneel. Don't sit on the bench. It's a different kind of kind of hit, different kind of look. He respected what the man's suggestion was. He won about it that way. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that the bigger issue here is when you have a league that is over 80% African-American, um, I do believe that if something hits them in the heart like that, they, I'm yes, sorry. they should have an, an opportunity excuse me, excuse me, to. Excuse me. Excuse me. Two things. I, I know I just said I was trying to get out of doing this, but I do yeah. want to read this one comment because I agree. Um, Matrix said your voice should be on ESPN for He's real. He's trying. He's trying. We're trying to get him. I'm going with you. All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. Go back. Appreciate you, boss. Which, yeah, we're trying to get. We're trying to get him there, Matrix. <laughs> we are really. Yeah, Rich. All All I'm getting at is it's not about if you agree or disagree. I don't have to be a black man to know that that's bogus, and I don't. And and all I have to be is a human being to know it's not right. That's the point. The only bottom line I have with that whole matter. I don't have to agree with everything Kaepernick did. For me to respect the fact that he's standing up for something that he believes in. And the problem with so many people, and we're going to see it around election time, is nobody knows how to disagree respectfully. I revisited Hillary and Trump going at it just to get a laugh when they were at Hofstra (laughs) University. They look like two children. I have a better chance of getting my my 10-year-old nephew and my lady's six-year-old son to have a more functional conversation than these idiots that we keep electing to office. Two kids. Two kids. And see that the and say it, it was a comment made. <laughs> I, I told you about the comment, Coco, on the phone. What the comment was made, and with Richie being from New York, Miss East from New York, I'm from New York. You know, regardless of everything else, that hit hard for us because those towers, we've all been in there many a time. It hit hard for us, and to watch our city get destroyed like that, absolutely. You know, it hit hard, and so that's why when even when I make jokes, I never mention nine eleven at. Oh. And I want to make one thing clear to piggyback you off that, Idris. I, in no way, shape, or form do I think it was intended to take a shit on the victims. I think it was specific. Right. Right. I think it was specific to the New York Jets. Exactly. Shit, the, the the thing was in poor taste. I give you that. Me being the guy on my podcast that runs a show, my name's attached to it. I just felt a moral obligation to make sure that thing was off the air as quick as it got there. Because we didn't need that heat. Absolutely not. We because if you heat. get the wrong person in there. You know, that completely destroys the brand that I've been working on for over almost two years now. Yeah, we need that heat. And um uh, absolutely. Yeah, and see, even on nine eleven, I don't I don't even post on nine eleven. That's just me. It's not the the forget it. I just don't I don't post on nine eleven. I let it But what I love that what you did on the show, Idris, um, and the, and this is tracking it back to a while and we revisited it in a more recent conversation, mm-hmm. is that you refer to it as American Saints Day. Right. Because, you know, many people have reasons to not like the way policing has been in this country. Right. I'm one of those people that's a firm believer that if my father was still alive, he would probably roll over in his grave with the way that some of the policing has been. When you look at the tragedies in Kenosha or with George Floyd in uh, in, in Minnesota, my whole point to be made with, with, with this matter is that on that day, they showed the exemplar exemplary of what it's supposed to be and one above and beyond not everybody had necessarily you know and yeah. i guess what, to your point civilians firefighters whatever have you it, it, it's just not a topic you you, you want to take the top off not to mention that when you talk about civilians you're also talking about babies because there was a nursery there too let's not forget that 
you know so um an ignorant topic uh it, it, an ignorant uh comment for sure yeah you know and, and i'm not easily like like shaken or offended because quite frankly i wasn't offended i was thinking right. more about just the stupidity of it yeah and the need to take it down that's really it there you go so that was verbal going gone wrong verbal gone wrong but even to to extend the arm on that it, it's like you know anything else if, if you know at our age you know i'm not perfect i know how to apologize when you live in a in a house with three puerto rican women mm -hmm. if you if, and you're the only dude if you don't know how to apologize you're gonna have a hard time <laughs> that's it I yeah, that, that, that could also, that could, yeah that could also be a lesson um and i'm quite sure it probably replays in a, and you know the person's head or whatever to like Hey, and I do that or if you just want to stand on it, stand on it. But I think it's also to be mindful of reading the room and also not understanding if there's a bigger picture outside or maybe rewording it or understanding that that's not what you say in that moment. Um, but then going back to um, when nonverbal things are offensive or mistakenly to be offensive or powerful so going back to the Ka kaepernick thing which is i'm kind of glad you brought it up i will use that in a sense if we want to use an example of some of a matter of when something no nonverbal became so offensive because he didn't say anything it was the action of what he did so at what point or um when does it become in, in your mind well, not your mind. When does something, non a nonverbal action becomes offensive? Not just saying just that one, but I'm just using that as an example yeah. of how a person cannot say anything but offend the masses. I think when someone, um, like, had he, let's just say he put up a middle finger. I could see that. Or, or if he knelt and was just saying some idiotic shit. Or, or even if you're coming out potentially aggressive. Yeah, uh, on some on, on some level of layer, but I think it's the most pacifist way to express yourself about something that is unjust when you really think about it. Because what do we do when we pray? We get on our knees, correct? I remember formerly Chris Jackson, mm -hmm. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf did this in the '90s, and he basically got ran out of the NBA. And, he and if he and, and to my basketball heads, that dude was Steph Curry before Steph Curry. Yeah, he prayed before yeah, he was. He was, actually. So basically, in, in lieu of 9-11, mm -hmm. and even before that, with, with this man who, who found the Muslim faith, mm -hmm. it's always kind of be, been predispositioned in here that, like, you know, there's something wrong with with that culture or people that have bought into that culture. Like, obviously, you take formerly Lou Alcindor, who mm -hmm. is now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mm -hmm. When you look at the man's resume and we've talked about this on the show idris no knock on michael jordan mm -hmm. but kareem doesn't get mentioned enough why is that because it's not the most comfortable guy to promote that's how it was he didn't have the million dollar smile like magic mm -hmm. he didn't take the game above the rim on the level that uh mj did mm -hmm. but more importantly that they try to sweep under the rug is that he was an activist right. and if you follow american sport going back all the way even with the 72 olympics this has always been a thing. Yeah. And I want to make something clear. And I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of this show. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a firm believer in live and let live. Mm -hmm. But in the year 2023, if a person of color has less rights than, than uh, people exercising um, their pride in their sexuality, I take issue with that. Richie about sent the Richie about sent don't, you, the don't you start? Don't you start? Don't you start? Look, Richie don't. just sent our ratings up hundred fifty percent. And like I said, I made it. I made sure to say that I'm not speaking on behalf of this show. I'm a guest, right. but uh, and don't get me wrong, man. I had a gay aunt. She was amazing. Yeah. You know, I I I don't I don't treat anybody differently as long as they as as they you know gay man stay in your lane. But that doesn't mean I can't I can't have a, a functional conversation with gay man. That's ridiculous if i if i couldn't you know i'm just saying that in the year 2023 when i think about so much of this it's insulting it's insulting your league is over 80 percent black you better hear what they have to say i'm laughing at matrix <laughs> keep calling him black, black. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's cracking me up you got mad uh, matrix females that's she's a woman 
These people, you got bad, you got fact sports. You got. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't see because the you F is over, you over the, the whole picture. I, I got the small screen. I couldn't tell. You should be calling you glad the whole time, man. That's, That's hilarious, there, like, bro. <laughs> I, I must start listening to myself now. Be like, damn, I really do sound like that dude. I never really, nobody ever And then you got the glasses. Yeah, shouts out the Matrix, man. <laughs> um, wow. I got it. Okay, I'm going to switch the tone a little bit. Um, right. Because you know this stuff one that people like to hear. So if you're in a relationship, or if you're de- not saying a relationship, if you're just talking to somebody, dealing with somebody of the opposite sex, y'all can just say it's sexual, whatever the, whatever the relationship yeah. may be. Yeah. Um, what do you prefer, verbal or nonverbal communication? And why? That's, that's um, tough. Um, you get it, Richie, first. I gotta you sure? Okay. Yeah. Um, verbal, in my case, uh, I'll share a little something personal with you. She wouldn't be mad, and that's why I don't mind sharing it. Uh, my significant other suffers from a condition called cavernoma. Shut and to up, make a long man. story short, um, it's it's basically a brain bleed. Not always bleeding, but it's something that, it, it's serious. I'll put it to you that way. It messes with your vision. It messes with a lot of things way before your time. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, when she was pregnant with her son, uh, she was involved in a bad car accident. So I think this topic hits on a different chord with me for the sheer fact that it is a a legitimate challenge for things that we do actually take for granted, like simple conversations, you know, finding a layer of patience with good reason why she might be forgetful. Right. You know, not tripping if she does something that might be like, damn, that was stupid, you know, because it does affect the brain. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm trying to say in my personal situation right now is that, you know, we're actually just trying to curb it to the best of our ability and uh definitely not the easiest week you know she's uh coming home tomorrow from the hospital but um definitely been been challenging uh to tell you that what's that what's that idris you've been in this whole time that um uh, day two she she went back uh because uh she wanted to get checked out and i'm glad she did but uh she's doing better though uh thankfully yeah she's doing better but uh yeah definitely uh something that uh I'm challenging myself as a man to just be more patient because uh, I, I got news for you, man. I wouldn't wish that condition on my worst enemy, man. Real talk. Yeah, I think with me, I'm I'm more of a show me show me person than tell me. Um, my one of my favorite songs, "More Than Words" by Extreme. You know, um, cause anyone can tell me anything. Sure. Um, I rather you show me, cause see, that's how I'm a show me person. I might not tell you, but I'll show you. I always say I'll show you better than I can tell you. Um, but I, I guess it's even. Um, I want to hear it sometime. I want to hear you. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your emotion. I want to hear that too. For sure. But I, but I want to see you. I want to see what you do also. So I guess it's 50 50. And like I said, it depends on the situation too. I'm a big kid, man. Like sometimes if I don't want to talk and I even joke with her, I'm like, damn, man, you messed up my Madden game. Right. Like just on some like. You know, normal stuff. I'm a big kid, man. You know, I own a house. I'm a homeowner. I live by myself still right now. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just one of those things where it's like when you have a dynamic of a man and woman living together and your child, it changes the dynamic of what the living situation is. That goes without saying. Yeah, but you got a lake right by his house, too. The giant, the giant's room turns into Spider-Man and Pokemons or, you know, whatever little little dudes in, the, you know, at the moment. You know, and I get it. it, it it's, it's different. But to get back grounded to the whole... Uh, communication thing it's a happy medium because it's never going to be perfect but it, it's important that both parties make a concerted effort to meet each other halfway and not just for men and women and relationships i mean i think it's it could be said for the world got to go to richie's house but she got a nice little crib i see because i was looking at the background oh you gotta go. <laughs> Uh, you got to go to his crib. His crib is huge inside. Right up, it's it cozy, outside. man. It's cozy, it's look, you know. It's look big as outside, but you go inside, you got to eat. Football man. Sundays. Football Sundays are cool, man. Got and then, nice the, you know, the little bit of, right of coolness that we get in Florida. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, look, I'm in my season of travel. I'll be there. Yeah. You got, yeah. <laughs> no, you're always welcome. Absolutely. When I went to his crib, Both I you guys always welcome. Idris, Idris uh, basically made an improv trip here. Yeah. And we banged out like three shows. Yeah, did we? Just chill, man. <laughs> Matrix and Jude is going off on these. So I'm going to just I say, I'm with, I'm with Jude on this one. Talk to me. I don't care. Talk to me all the time. Okay. Right. So my whole thing is, I need you. I like, because maybe because I haven't always been a communicator 
And yeah. then I realized how important, like people, I can't read your mind. I don't know, especially if it's how you feel, something I'm doing wrong, right. something I'm doing right. Um, what is it that you want? What is it that you need from me? I need you to talk to me. Right. Don't shoot me a text with that. Talk to me. But then I'm also like Jude in certain situations. <laughs> like she said, I have a problem with staying focused on a conversation sometimes. Yeah. She said, I have ADHD. We can be talking and then I can miss the whole conversation because I'm one of them type of people. If something pop up in my mind, especially if I'm hungry, and okay. I start thinking about food and you talking to me, and I'll be like, "You hungry?" And it's not, and yeah. I'm so rude and disrespectful. But then I'm also a matrix. Sometimes that text conversation can lead to something else. But I think it's all about what it is. Now, if we both at work or something like that, and a text message, comes, yeah, we we can text. Mm-hmm. You know, get the, get the juices flowing. But at the same time, and even still then, I still need you to talk to me. Like, I don't know. Is it something about communication that's just, like, great for me? My I, best I, suggestion. I need, I need that. My best suggestion, men, women alike, however however y'all get down, when it gets to that point of anger, somebody's got to take a walk. Like, when I mean a walk, yeah. I mean, like, you know, go outside, get mm-hmm. some fresh air. And sometimes, and I'm still learning it even at my age, that you have to concede sometimes mm-hmm. Yeah. That being right is not always more important than being happy. Right. That no woman ever. And if you wait for the woman to walk away, you crazy as hell. Because let me tell you, with that That's woman, why we do it. She gonna get the, no, y'all don't leave because I'm a whole Gemini woman. Let me tell you. Let me tell you the worst. I'm going to tell you who I don't deal with because yeah. it's shit like this. The motherfucking Tauruses. Let me tell I you. I say Taurus. They. Them, this, let me tell you. Me and that man. Oh, Richard, you're Taurus. Who? You're Taurus? No, no, I'm laughing. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I never, I never, that was the, I was one and done. He will go back and forth and I'd be like, all right, then let's just drop it or whatever. Because, you know, you about to take it somewhere. I'm going to say something that I'm, say what the fuck you guys say it. So and I'm hard. like, yo. And I'm like, you don't want me to say because I know my mouth can get disrespectful when I'm pissed off. Two of Morena's boyfriends. Facts. Facts. Both forces. She had to cuss both of them out. And they kept talking. They kept on. She be calling me, Unc, I'm telling you. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure if your course. lady walk away, she pretty much done. And we also, it's when you stop talking. Because if we engage with you, it's like, because we, we trying to get you to, to feel us or whatever. Hey. But sometimes I also know we also got to allow people to walk away because they may be getting to a point where they about to knock your head off. Well, you know what? <laughs> if, I house, say. if I lived at Richie's house, one of us is going in the lake. Oh, I can't swim, so I don't play by water. That's one thing I won't do. I will not run my, my mouth by water. I'll be your best friend. As soon as we pass that water, and you had me. That, that's what oh, it well, I mean, his lake is like, <laughs> Coca, his lake is like right there. It's like right there. You could throw it your opposite arm and throw throw a rocket to the yeah. Lake. My my <laughs> my, <laughs> my buddy my buddy uh, doesn't live in the neighborhood anymore, but he yeah. used to live on the other side of the lake. I mean, we legit yeah. would throw the football to each yeah. other it's over the right lake. There. You could say sometimes walking away hurt. No, it don't because they gotta watch you walk away. They they be big. I walk away quick. I don't have no problem walking out the door. I no, no. Honest, away. honestly, it's no, it's, yeah. it's better. It's better than getting it to a point of where no, okay, you start saying that. some stuff that you really don't want to say, and then you know something small could turn into something catastrophic. You know, so it's like you gotta. And, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's healthy to have a legitimate argument, and sometimes things need to be said. I'm not saying, you know, just get run over, but you know, you have to pick and choose your battles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. I agree. But um, I can honestly say I've learned to um to to be quiet sometimes. But if I know I'm right, I'm not shutting the fuck up. I'm sorry because you don't understand that I know I'm right. Now if you just not getting it and you want to be right, and if I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall and I'm I'm getting my now I have learned or I'm still learning and sometimes when to just stop because I have a point sometimes. <laughs> of, um, Yo, this is hilarious. Of like Man. overly explaining. <laughs> That's what I'm start calling you, Richie. First. Black, Man. right? You, you about to be black. You might as well just change your whole name on your show. What's black? Uh, the Vlad of Sports, right here. We just got to spell it differently. That's all. Because yeah. we don't want this copyright stuff. Before. Yeah, we don't want to. Yeah, we don't want that. Oh, We're going to call you Sports Vlad. What's Vlad? Just combine it all together. What's Vlad? That's Black. funny. 
That's funny. What's, what's the next question, man? <laughs> I don't have my thing pulled up. Um. So okay, oh, that man. friendships. Mm-hmm. Oh, G- oh, I'm sorry. I was just about. Sh- I'm sorry. G- <laughs> Big facts. Big facts. Drew G- uh, G- said, "Women that date men don't understand how powerful walking away and collecting yourself before you continue to communicate is, until you lose somebody that you really, really love." Because you know what what, you know something about Jude. Jude is that she's that. She was a man in her past life. She she had to be because she's like you got the women over here, you got the men over. She's the one that be like. Jude is the shit. You haven't met Jude, Richie, but Jude is the shit. Jude is more of the shit. Jude is Uranus. <laughs> or Uranus, as they call it. Jude is the shit. And that's, I think, people... She had to be a man in a, in a, in a past life. No, not only that. Just a, a Jude appreciation moment. Like, she's one of them people... She's open-minded, man. Objective. Not, no, it's it's not even that. She just has like a, a aura and a personality, mm-hmm. even no matter what way you communicate with her. You you know, she just has that that presence. That's one thing you're gonna do is definitely smile. Right. And it's it's like, an, it's like an experience, <laughs> so so to speak. Because I, I told you from the moment I met her, it's never been a dull moment. If if it's ever a conversation, even if I'm venting to her, she do something stupid, she'll be like we do used to come on the show and this happened <laughs> you know what she was doing? <laughs> she's like let me tell y'all something <laughs> and then she come <laughs> so, so if i'm gonna make a sports reference that could be like that could be like fighting like mayweather yeah jude no. jude, jude is something yeah. Dude, then she would get stuck. Point, you can tell when she had she had, if she had this cup, and you see her doing this, and and so she'll do this for a second, it'll go black. Uh-huh. So you never knew what was going on. And then yeah. if she got a cup, she'll say what she gotta say, uh-huh. and then be like, <laughs> the whole show stone face. She'd be like, "Yo, you here? Ow." <laughs> Do something. You got to go back and watch the old older shows, man. Do so that that's my girl. That's my internet wife, man. Do do something else, man. <laughs> First day I met her, I was like, yeah, I'ma like her. Okay. Yeah. Shouts out you. to Jude, man. Shouts out to Jude. Um, Jay the same way because he used to get Jay get up here and can't get his right angle. Oh, that, Jay, Jay something like, else too. He Jay got right. The whole sh- way, Matt. Way, no, man. another Jay, Jay, another one. But when my like, yeah, lighting is fine, he'd be like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, wait. Sit there and he'll get that perfect angle and be like, <laughs> mm. and then you'll hit mm. now. What was we talking about? Uh-huh. What was the question? You'd be like, bro. Yeah, Jay, yep. Jay, another one. Jay need to come back on the show though. Speaking of these, <laughs> speaking of them two, friendships and communication. This is this is gonna be great for me. Um, and your friendships, what is your best form of communication? Me and Richie talk about as much as you and me, you and me do. Yeah, yeah. Idris and I uh, because, speak you know, about many a topic. Working, but yeah. But I got to say one thing, and, and this is like as honest as it could ever be. Mm-hmm. Um, sadly, about a decade or so ago, I lost someone who I always considered a big brother. Way too young, passed away. But, you know, a big brother to me at that time, nonetheless. And I must admit, man, you have different friends, different relationships with friends. That man right next to you, that... Your co-host, that is my big brother. I appreciate. Make no it, mistake. Man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. And see, when, his, when I when I finally got a chance to talk to his mother, I didn't say nothing. I just listened to her talk, and she just had me in tears. Yeah, my mom's funny. She yeah, just had funny. me crying. She's funny. And I was like, "Your mom's is cool as shit." <laughs> we down in Jacksonville at the at the foot at the game. And yeah. I got on the phone with her, and she just had. I said. I love this woman. She just had me yeah. crying. <laughs> nah, she's uh yeah, she's a character. Uh, for sure. For she sure, get for mad? sure. Cause that situation we had when she hit me up and she was mad. I was like, she was like, mad. Oh, she mad. Like I haven't I'm even met her yet. I'm like, I'm right. She's no, no, she like, like I don't have any other words. It's like she's a character. I mean, there's a lot of things I could say, but, but yeah, my mom, my mom is most definitely uh most yeah. definitely character and like you know best compliment i get from any and all friends female male alike 
exes, currents, whatever. It's just like, uh, yeah, they always say the same thing. Like, I guess the best compliment you get when you ever walk in this road of life is that you're real. I think that's the most important thing. No matter where you're from or who you are, it's like, you know. And like I told, like I told Coco when I spoke to her on the phone, she doesn't sound like her age. Nah, oh, nah, nah. Oh, definitely, uh, oh yeah. She sounds thirty years younger. Yeah. Yes, she sounds well, thirty. Years let me call her. Call her. Oh, oh. First of all, women, um, um, Marina. Yes, we did see when you said "fuck Tauruses" because I know you wanted me to put that out there. Hey, I, I told her how. I, was, I told. <laughs> she said, "Did my kid men pop up?" Yes, hey, Marina. I told. I told her the, the Taurus situations you've had. <laughs> She's had some bad experience with Tauruses. I think with um. Her brother's a Taurus. So you guys, you guys take a lot of. So you guys take a lot of, a, a lot of in, into account with the zodiac signs. Seen the, the to a thing. degree, to a degree, to a degree. Okay. I don't, I don't get so caught up on it. Whereas though, I don't try to get to know the person. Yeah. But I know there's certain interactions with certain types of people. For me, I know my limitations of what, how I should get to know them. For All me, right. to oh, point, I, I cannot, I cannot date one, and I cannot date a Pisces man. I cannot do it. I cannot. Versus do are hard headed. You can't tell them nothing. Versus are hard headed. They are the bull. I can't do it. Bullheaded. That does make sense. That's wild. Okay. Okay. I can't do it. Now you said about friendship. What was the question again? Can oh, we, we, you, you see how destroyed <laughs> I am about yeah, that? Yeah, we to see that question and then we go somewhere else. <laughs> Jew, I said Pisces man. I date men, not women. So you always talk about every time somebody say Pisces, ain't nobody talk about you. You're a woman. <laughs> She always coming in the car. She got a man solo. Okay, so let me tell you about about my community. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, we got one. Lisa. I forgot Lisa's a sweetheart. Okay, uh -oh. we're gonna say it's for the Taurus men. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's, let's, let's keep so, it um, <laughs> no, I would think for friendships for me, I want to yeah. say. Because I can count my friends on my hand now. I think it's important to know your friends so you know how to communicate with your friends. Um, I think verbal is for me, especially if there's an issue or if I'm doing something that's not in agreement with you, I need you to talk to me the same way I would talk to you. But when it comes to not talking, I think for me it's important for my, under my friends to understand not to take it personal. And that's why I say you got to know your friends because sometimes if you if we haven't talked, it's no love loss. I could be going through something, something could be going on, and vice versa. Like if I don't talk to people, I don't get offended because you don't talk to me. I just figure you you need some time because nine times out of ten, I ain't got nothing to talk about, no way. <laughs> so well, you know what it is too. Sometimes when people aren't speaking, it's not necessarily about who's near them. Sometimes it's just as simple as it's about them in the moment. And a lot of times that could be misconstrued too. But uh yeah. You know, like, I'll be, I'll be honest, like, if I feel like I'm getting stimulation overload, if I just mm -hmm. want to jam out to my music and, and my phone starts blowing up. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure I do that, too. Hey, I'm the host of the show. I'm always dropping all these texts and organizing mm -hmm. stuff and this and that. And, you know, I, I, get like, I get like this detailed message. You're just like, OK. Not but you know what? You get it, though, because I know he's a reader, so I ain't sweating it. Yeah, I think but, it's yeah. easy to lose contact because I know, like, most of my friend groups, they like they they need to know. Okay, are you good? Are you okay? Because we do worry about each other. So I've had, um, well, especially ones that I'm still close with today. They had to tell me you were being a sucky friend, and I think it's important to tell your friend when you and you gotta be able to receive that of knowing when you're being a sucky friend or when you're not being a sucky friend. So for me, I need you to talk to me. Don't just text me because sometimes that's not. If we supposed to be tight and if we're friends, because I think I view friends differently than just somebody I'm cool with. Yeah, we're going to check in from time to time. Or if I'm even if I'm going through something, I need to still say, hey, I'm OK. Yeah. You know, this is then a third. And I think that's just a respect matter of that. But um, but even if it comes to disagreement with friends, um, I think it's OK to have disagreements. But I don't like to dwell in it, especially if I love you as my friend. You know, and I'm considering. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want you don't want things to back up, and and like the same thing as like applying it to the relationships. Yeah. But I think like the the biggest uh, telltale of the kind of friends people are is like when they're there for you. You you could sometimes go months without speaking, but I think uh, during times of crisis or when people are going through it, um, you know, showing that you're always there, I think 
speaks volumes about all of it because it's it's very easy to be around people when times are, when times are great. Mm -hmm. it, it speaks to a, a different metric when you're around when people are really going through it. And I and I think that's what some of the best bonds are are really uh, founded on. It's not about when it's easy to get along when everything's going good. It's easy on, on so many levels, but it's when things get challenging. I think that's when what, what truly shows. And to your point about having the hand, um, do I have? I might have more than five, but I definitely have less than ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my sister Ruth Elliott. She in the building. That's Marina's mama right there. I'm I'm with her. She said I could be in the house mm -hmm. and not say anything all that. And and I agree. Mm -hmm. But we live in an era where we could all be in the same house and talk to each other. Or you could be sitting at the same room. Yes, room. bananas, <laughs> man. You know, That's it. crazy. Me, my mama, and my sister. That's how we are. We could be in this like me. And, I live. Me and my mother live together. You know for like seven years before she passed away she was in the next room i was we would stay nothing to each other all day but we were good we were great then i would go in there the next day sit in the rocket chair and talk to her like my sister saying wait she, we we'll sit in the house all day and be like i'm good they used to have to drag me out the house now my sister's like i am now because it used to be where she would be out going like come on bro come on outside come on come do this come do this now she doesn't hit her 50 She's the way I used to. Well, I'm still like, I've been this way like for 40 something years. But now that's how she is. She'd be in the house all day. Like, oh, now you done, you done turned into me now. All them days you try to drag me out the house. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, and Marina's the same way. Could be in the house, you know. Yeah. I told see, they all, see, they all became like, y'all, they all became like me. See? <laughs> they all became like me. And they're happy. <laughs> which okay which one do you think is the most ineffective regardless overall and yeah and your own thought or words like nah, bro. Which, why because um i say non bro because looking at a person you don't know what's going on to where if someone's talking to you you can see the expression you can hear it in their voice Looking in their eye, you, you got you got everything in front of you. Like I could stand in front of you and be calm and say, "Like, why are you mad?" Right. Or right. I might be mad. You might think I'm calm. I might be sitting on the couch playing the game. I might be pissed off. I mean, I mean, I might not be pissed. You might think I am, but if I'm talking to you, you can hear me in my voice. You can look in my eyes. You can look at my body language. All that other stuff, and be like, "Okay, I got you." Yeah, I'm, because I'm, yeah, got you. Rich. Say, say if you're tired and you're texting somebody. It might not be the most like effective way to communicate on our end, even. Right. So, like, say it's a significant other, just throwing it out there. They might think that you're blowing them off, mm -hmm. or or maybe that you're just like. I, I just think that sometimes with texting, if and once again, it it depends on the subject matter. Yeah. There's sometimes you know, it, it's useful on that metric, but I do think that. Uh, you know, if you're if you're wholly and solely reliant on it, I think it kind of dumbs us down. <laughs> you know, yeah, because talking's important, man. It it, yeah. it most definitely is. I don't like when people just limit or want to have and well, for me, I don't think important conversations. Like I used to be cool with my like she would they would want to have important conversations via text. Hmm. That's not good for me because it's like, especially okay if if. If a person says I did something to them that offended them or hurt their feelings, right? I'm a sensitive person where as though if I care about you and if something I said or did hurt you, it's going to really affect me. I'm going to feel fucked up, right? Right. Okay. So if we're having that conversation, don't text that to me. Talk to me. Yeah. Because and if I feel like, because once you feel some type of way, anything that's coming through text, like you said, sometimes people say things like we talk, but that's not the moment that I'm being me or being goofy or being sarcastic. I'm really taking into consideration what this is. Now I'm doing self-reflection of how I can be better so that that doesn't happen again. So I think a lot of times with that and also with the communication piece is also ownership, not only for myself, but you gotta you gotta take accountability too with yeah. certain things. So for me, like the the hard and the tough conversations, no, we're not gonna text that. I agree, cause see, I know sometimes when I text people, um, they might send me a text, and I I don't want to even, 
I don't want to hear it. And I don't read it because I know if I read it, I respond. To if I'm talking to somebody face to face, we're going to sell that right then. It's not going to be any long text where they might have said something. They might have been like apologizing, but I might be so pissed off or whatever. Right. Hey, I'm not going to read it. I might just because I've deleted texts that people sent me because we were going back and forth. Like even on Facebook, somebody get on my nerves too much. I won't even read their comment. They might be like, yo, I apologize. Hey, so and you know something? Idris, yeah. I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No, you good. Um, what I noticed too is mm -hmm. that I can't speak for everybody, but for me personally, if I'm having like a legitimate argument, mm -hmm. the, the you know what I hate when you start seeing them typing, you like waiting on it and you waiting on it. Yeah, that shit is hella frustrating. That's for why. that. Let's have a conversation when when our new when our nerves cool down. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's why I said we need to do it face to face. Right. Like and if it's that. not the time face to face, like I said, you know, go take a little walk or go take a go I'll, I'll hit the couch tonight. It's all right. That's your name, Richie, from here on out. Sports Vlad, man. Uh, it could be worse, bro. It beats that <laughs> other name that Dorney put on me a couple of years ago on that when he was joking uh -oh. around. Hey Lamont, welcome. I have missed you earlier. Oh, he, he, Lamont was here earlier. I was saying about he ain't saying nothing. Yeah, he's he's talking talking he's, um, he said, uh, you know, I gotta get my Lamont in. Yeah. Risk yeah. opinions are completely opposed to that Chanel. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> See, that's why I love me reading with Lamont's comments. Lamont. I love Lamont. Lamont be so because let me say Lamont is one of them personalities because he's so like distinguished gentleman type. <laughs> And he's he, always he really like he really that, that gentleman. So even when he's having his quirky moments, serious uh -huh. moments, I just always see distinguished gentlemen. And that's a good thing. Don't please don't yeah. do that. I've known Lamont, I don't know how many years. We don't hooked up in the ATL so many times, but he has that distinguished way about him, but he always says some shit. <laughs> he'd be like, bruh. And he'd be like, it's true. <laughs> Look it up, and he'll be like, "I'll send you something." <laughs> talk about a national disaster. Oh, I gotta, I gotta share something quickly. And, and if go, I'm going off, a monkey wrench in there. <laughs> you know, please go off topic. We always do. Go ahead. Go ahead risky, if I'm, yeah, you know, if you, if you gotta be like, shut up, Rich. It's okay. But um, so me and oh, Idris, we're in Jacksonville. Oh, uh, we man. talk about uh, you know, texting can lead to things. So can yeah. being uh, a keyboard warrior on social media. Yeah. All oh. I'm going to say is that someone tried to punk Idris thinking that he was either short or a little guy or whatever have you. And all I'm going to say is like, shouts out Gary and Shauna, yo, people yeah. we went with. Poor Shauna. I was like, yo, you got to introduce them. She knew what I was doing. She knew what I was doing. <laughs> this man damn near shit his pants when he saw how, how Idris towered over him. And I was like turning red, dying laughing. Idris <laughs> was out with a friend. I don't know how he got there so quick, but I was like, yo, yo, come through. Pull up now. Like, now. Like, yesterday. He got there so quick. And on top of it, he parallel parked perfectly and found, a, like, the best parking spot. I, and we had to go pay a dude to go park. But anyways, um, that's another thing. You know, if uh, the world isn't that big, guys, you know, if, if you're going to talk like that, you know, don't be, don't be stupid. Don't be reckless. Here's the backstory. The guy, he's a Giants fan. Yaps, 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 da 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 da. Now he's never seen him in my day of my life. So we get to Atlanta, and I'm I I don't I, I don't know if I was at the hotel or the I can't remember, I think I might have been at the Airbnb, but I was gonna come there. They said, "Yo, Richie's like, yo, yo, he's here, he's here." No, nah, no, nah, we went Jacks, we went Jacks. I mean, I wasn't sure if I was at the, at the Airbnb and uh, where I was when you hit me up and told me to come on down. Um. I know I was in the car. I don't, I don't know what I was doing, but he, he said, yo, come on. He's here now. So I got there. So we sitting there. We meeting the other Giants fans, you know, da, 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 da. Then Richie said, there you go, right there. And I said, that's him? I said, well, I had told Richie early that day. When I see him, I'm going to go, what's up, bitch? So. Yo, yeah. He wasn't so, playing. Like, when yeah. He, so yeah. when I finally seen him, Shauna and Shauna, great Shouts out to Shauna. We put her, Richie put her on the spot. <laughs> Richie's like, good, good. And I could look at Shauna. Shauna didn't want to do it. She wanna edit it. She wanna do it. Went over there. Said, yo, this is this is blah blah blah. I was like, what's up, bitch? Now I'm six feet two seventy, two eighty. This guy gotta be about five, six, maybe one little guy. And I look at him, I said, What's up, bitch? And he looked up at me. 
and yeah, he like he's seen a ghost. That listen, and I know, <laughs> I know Idris is is a wise enough man to know that there's literally no metal and 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 nothing and and you know cracking somebody that is uh, physically yeah. inferior. All I'm gonna say is that that shit was funny. Yeah, I did that because because he. The whole time on Facebook for a few years, he just kept yapping, 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 talking shit to me. So I said, all right, whatever, man. Right. Now, I didn't know I was going to meet him there. Richie said he he might be there. But when he was there, I was like, oh. And he, the that was the, that was the day before the game, the night before the game. Yes, day indeed. In the game, we in, we're in the, the, doing the tailgate thing. And he looked like a kid lost. Like, he ain't had no friend. Oh, he was so petrified. Yeah. And me and Idris were just like. We, we barely moved. We didn't move for that tailgate. We we basically were don't, like, don't let him put it all on me. Richie was, <laughs> Richie was making bad his words too. <laughs> I ain't taking all the blame. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, that's another example. We're talking about communication. Communication. Like, yeah. You know, I, I I keep it like reasonable, and and when people, yeah. you know, make certain jokes on social media, like I got tough skin in general. But my yeah. my whole thing is. Uh, don't come out of your skin and think that you're gonna go whip somebody because you yeah. know, like I said, the world is not that big. It's not that big. And that's the message on that one. Not that big. So, um, last question. Mm -hmm. If you could give somebody advice on how to communicate verbally and non-verbally, what would you say? Patience is a virtue. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, yeah. patience is so important. And uh, and like I shared, you know, something personal going on in uh, my life right now, and that's being tested. And but mm -hmm. to be honest with you, and I'm a firm believer in this, um, it's difficult, no question. But I've come to find in life that uh, anything too easy is usually not worth it. Yeah, I say the same thing. Um, don't go into the conversation thinking you're right. Listen, listen to what the person's saying. I, I think that's reasonable because, like, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, m most people want a healthy resolution. I, I don't think that uh, people go in guns blazing always um, looking for, you know, a worse thing. And believe me, th there's people in your life that uh, are seasons and they're not supposed to be there that long. So, right. you know, I, I, th I think I, I've come a ways with figuring, you know, being able to compartmentalize which is which, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's been, I think it's also important. And I mean, it, being open minded, and I yeah. think I want to say Drew touched on the head, understanding how to talk to people and being mindful, or listening to people how you want people to listen to you. Yeah. Um, if you want to be heard, you got to make sure you fully hear people and come in with the open mind and perspective to not be defensive. If you're already going into a conversation, no matter how you're going into it, even if you're texting, doing whatever, make sure your, your defenses are not already up. If they are, don't even hear the conversation. That's because great advice. Go, it's yeah. going to go left anyway. So yeah. I think it's important to go into it with, with a level head, <clears throat> be mature about it because everybody want to say they grown, but we make childish choices when we're when our emotions are high regardless Absolutely. of what that emotion is so it's like if you're not ready to have the conversation and have like a positive result or some type of conclusion whether it's it's good bad or whatever you're able to walk away with a clear understanding because if you're going in defensive everything is just you're not even hearing what the person is saying and yeah. they're not receiving what you want to say because you're you're going to be like Ugh, all yeah. right in that moment so i think it's important to be open-minded and really understand and plus ted talks got a lot of videos on communication that, mm. are, that are like it's really really great good. um yeah for understanding nonverbal and verbal communication and what's a, what's offensive. And I think it's also important that if you are being offended by something somebody is saying, doing, or a gesture, it's okay to say, one, one second, because I'm not yeah. getting the rest because I'm taking this part the wrong way. And I know you don't mean to do this, or do you? Because now I need to know how I need to receive you right. in that moment. And I think it's okay to help people understand how they need to talk to us. Because I, I will stop somebody quick. That's not how you talk to me. We can revisit this another time. Yeah. Um, right. And that's okay. The person's that's shoes, about... Coco. You got to yeah. wear the other person's shoes. You don't always have to agree. Yeah. But I think yeah. it's important to have some layer of empathy. Because if you can have empathy, it mm -hmm. goes a very long way. You don't necessarily have to know the other person's struggle yeah. to, to understand. And, and that can be taken in so many directions. Just as having a rough day 
or or something way more substantial than that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's okay to set your boundaries, whether it's your relationships, your business um, relationships, and your friendships, because a lot of people think you have to accept how somebody talks to you in the work world or behind the scenes. No, you do not. You get paid to do your job and to display your skill set and to provide whatever service that it is that you're going to provide. I'm a firm believer. I don't get paid to be disrespected and I don't tolerate right. you who you are, what you do, especially if it's not going to, it's the way you do things. Yep. So it's okay to have a voice, but make sure your 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 well within your voice and you can stand on what you say and what you do, but also be able to receive and hold yourself accountable as well as the person that you're talking to. Accountability. I love that word. I absolutely big love word. That word because it bled into some of the stuff that Idris and I were sharing about our little yeah. thing with the uh with what we do. So yeah, uh Coco, thank you for having me, Idris. Thank you for having me. This oh, yeah. Yeah. because before y'all go, I got I got something to say. Because yep. next week we're doing open discussion. So please, whatever y'all want to hear us talk about, you can let us know. Yep. You can send us messages or the day of the show, you can just start talking. We are, we are really, really open. We're very approachable about mm -hmm. what you guys want to hear us talking about. Open discussion. Y'all know anything goes. We usually have fun. It's the whole. Um, also, <clears throat> Sundays, every Sunday from 10 to 2 p.m. At, in the Irvington community is the Farmer's Market. Um, hand radio, hand TV. Everybody gonna be there. I'm planning on be there this week, this Sunday. Um, two nineteen College Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland. Two one two two nine. Vendors, fresh produce, all of that good stuff. Good music, fun time. Bring out the kids, bring the family. Support local businesses and all of those things because we all about supporting your businesses. Coming soon. Also, if you have a business, we will do it again where we are doing a show where we are going to support small businesses, local businesses, or wherever you from. But you are responsible for letting us know what your business is. I don't care if we know you, how we know you. If you don't send it, we ain't just going to do that because we do it all the time. Right. Also, follow Richie Hicks Jr. Check out the Richie Hicks Jr. podcast, sports podcast on YouTube. Where else you at? Um, I'm also on X, formerly Twitter. And there's a backup Facebook page that I hold with the title, the Richie Hicks Jr. Sports Podcast. Um, and I appreciate everybody uh, giving us a look, man. We're uh, getting some really cool steam, and we got some excellent episodes. We have uh, two former Super Bowl champions that have visited our show uh, in the last few months, Aaron Moorhead of the Philadelphia Eagles. He's currently the wide receiver coach, as well as William Barnon Floyd, who was a member of the 94 49ers. So, uh Shouts to them, and uh, yeah, excellent show on your behalf here, guys, and I appreciate you guys sharing my stuff. Thank you for having us, and, and last but not least, and more importantly, check out Big Bosco from the Bronx every Wednesday from 6 to 8 with his mix show, bringing you all the dope music, different sounds, differences, enlightening you with everything from old school, new school, hard rock, soft rock, neo soul, R&B, boom, Plastic, all of that stuff. And also, if you haven't done so and you have a hand TV, cell, I mean, on a hand TV, a Roco TV, <laughs> cell phone, or anything else, download the hand TV app and you can watch us on hand TV too. And you can follow all the good shows. Shop Tommy, everybody be on there. We be lit. Uh, shout Idris. <laughs> uh, that's a real DJ. Uh, know the differentiation. That's not, that's not a guy playing with the buttons. That's a real DJ right there. Just appreciate want to make that uh, clear from the golden era. That's a real DJ right there. Appreciate it. And if you want to talk, check out any past shows, please go to the Casual Convo YouTube and also check us out on Spotify, okay? Yes, sir. We love you guys. Open discussion next week. Bosco. Thank you for tuning into the show as we do every Wednesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Spotify. <laughs> Shouts out to everybody joining in. Of course, my boy Richie Hicks, aka Sports Vlad. <laughs> I am your co I am co host, Bosco from the Bronx. For my host, the baddest sister that you ever going to meet on the podcast, Coco, to hand radio in the back. We are out till next week, y'all. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>